let's have a look at question two now so suppose that the demand is the demand of the sole customer the only customer of the monopolist how much profit can the firm make if it's gonna do perfect first degree price discrimination and the marginal cost is gonna be equal to two so let's recall this is the demand function now to understand what is the first degree discrimination it's better to do it on the graph so they will see the difference between having a discriminating monopolist because he's literally discriminating perfectly that's first degree uh, discrimination and then we'll see how this contrasts to the previous example where he was just a regular monopolist non-discriminating now this is going to be our price and quantity graph and we're gonna plot our demand so the demand is gonna have a price intercept equals to 8 over here it's gonna start from 8 now the slope is going to be negative 1, so the maximum quantity is also going to be 8. If we connect the, the, the two points, this will give us our demand function. So this is our demand. Now the marginal cost is equal to 2, so let's plot that as well because that matters. The marginal cost is going to be 2. So if we do it like that over here, marginal cost. Now we can see we have an intersection point and here comes into play the idea of this um, discriminating monopolist. Recall that in the case of non-discriminating, so when he was non-discriminating, the property, the criteria that he was using was marginal revenue equals to marginal cost. But now because he's perfectly discriminating, the strategy is the following. It's wiser to reduce, to reduce the price slightly. So he's going to reduce the price and he's going to make it as a, as a, a regular competitor price equals to marginal cost but besides that he's gonna add a fixed fee he's gonna add a fixed fee that's gonna be equivalent to the consumer surplus that's the idea of perfect discrimination the the monopolist knows that the consumers still have the capacity to pay all this amount this is going to be the consumer surplus above the level of two and this is the intuition if he charges the price equals to two let's say if that's gonna be the price that he charges the monopolist has access to information somehow that the consumers are willing to pay all this amount. This is what consumer surplus is telling us. This is still the willingness to pay for the consumers. They still can pay that amount. And since the monopolist knows it, he can charge it and put the money in his pocket. So he will have profit from the consumer surplus. This goes into the profit of the monopolist. And he also has profit from the fact of selling uh, several units. We're going to calculate in a second how much at the level of two euros. So this is gonna be also profit for the monopolist. In other words, all, all of this area goes into the monopolist pocket. Now, since he does price equals to marginal cost to sell it at a lower price, it's gonna be uh, over here, marginal cost equals to two. So the price is gonna equal two, meaning that he's gonna sell two equals to eight minus quantity. And the quantity that he's going to sell is gonna be equal to six units. So the quantity that he sells is six units over here. He's gonna sell six units. Uh, okay, now with this in mind, we can calculate how much profit he makes. And for that, we need the consumer surplus and we need this rectangle over here, which is the same as the producer surplus for the monopolist. So the consumer surplus is going to be the area of the triangle, which is one over two times this height, which is eight minus two, and that's gonna be equal to six times the length and the length is from zero units until six units so it's six as well now six times six that's 36 divided by two it's gonna be 18 so that's the profit he gets from charging the extra fee and recall from consumer behavior a couple of um, chapters ago that's just two part uh, two part pricing I think that's how it's called two part pricing one price is for the unit and another price is for a fixed fee that, that we can charge. And in this case, maybe the monopolist is charging a certain subscription so that the consumer is subscribed to his line of products and he knows every month what's coming up new and stuff like that, you know? So it's, a, it's an additional fee uh, to charge for this consumer surplus. Now, that was the consumer surplus. That's how much money he would make from there. He also makes money by selling six units at two euros. So he would also have his producer surplus, which is two euros for six units and that's 12 well 18 plus 12 gives him a total profit of 30 euros so that would be equal to 30 and that would be the profit that he's making if he uses this perfect uh, first degree discrimination hope this makes sense in the next two videos we'll see the difference between Cournot and Stuckelberg competition